Hi and welcome to this video for Slideshow Pro. In this video I'll be demonstrating the features of Slideshow Pro and also be showing you after I've done that how to make a recording of the Slideshow Pro presentation and even include the sound that would be playing normally if you use Slideshow Pro. So let's first switch to my screen. This is my desktop behind me and I can launch Slideshow Pro from there and that would give you the main interface. So this is the main interface, nothing is loaded um, so we first have to add some pictures. So let's do that. We'll just go to Finder and I have some pictures in a sample folder and I'll just um, choose them all and I will just drag them in here. So this is also a new feature of the latest version of Slideshow Pro. It allows you to drag those images in. Before you had to add pictures and select them there. It's the same thing but some people are just used to drag and drop. What can be done with Slideshow Pro? Well, it can show a slideshow, obviously, of the pictures that I've just loaded. And it can do a couple of things that other slideshow applications cannot do. It can add a caption to each slide. So if I want to have a caption here, I can switch it on and then decide what the caption should be by double-clicking it. So this is a slide of Amsterdam, so let's call this Amsterdam. Second one is Banff, so let's rename that one to Banff. Third one is Big Bend, so let's rename that Big Bend. You get the idea. This is how captions can be added. The duration of each slide is 10 seconds, and the total length is 130 seconds in just adding up those 13 images. The captions will be shown at the position that we define here, so it will be vertically in the center and horizontally. It will always be in the center because that's the most logical place to put it. It will be displayed in the font that I choose, so if I choose a different font it will show up in that font, so let's use a, a nice different font and use the, the well, the handwriting font and we can make it a little bit bigger if we want and we can choose a color for it, so let's make it a orange one. Okay. Now the other settings here are the transition effect, so that's the effect between each uh, of the slides. You can choose any of these. If any of those do not work on your Mac, you might be running a operating system that's a bit older, because not all of these methods were available on all operating systems. So if you use the latest operating system, all of these will work. If not, you may have to choose one that does work on your particular version of OS. So let's start with a um, standard dissolve one and we can set the transition speed, so the speed at which it transitions from the first or to the second or whatever image. And we can use the feature called zoom effect and if we do we can set the speed at which it zooms. So if we um, want that we can leave it on, if we don't we can switch it off. Loop continues, kind of obvious. If you switch it on, it will go back to the first slide after showing the last one. And start full screen means you can also show the screen show at a different size, at a custom size. Which could be handy if you uh, want to record it, and we'll cover recording later on. So let's first show how this works. If we just start it, and by clicking it, it will start the slideshow. It will take a few seconds to prepare and then it will show the screen uh, starting with the black screen and then show the first picture over that. So there's Amsterdam and then 10 seconds later it will be followed by the other image, Banff, in a fade transition. And it will do the same thing for the third image. So this is how you can basically do a simple slideshow. If you want to pause it, you can use escape to get out of the full screen mode, which will take the animation into a separate window. And then you could actually move that window so you can see both your interface and the animation. And uh, now it's possible to show you a few effects that we can set. So now you can see the zoom is working. If we switch off the zoom effect, it's no longer zooming. 
and I was just going through each of the images and doing a crossfade on each. We did not add any music. Uh, to add music, you can simply drag a file from the finder. Well, let's see, a music file here. This is a music file. I can drag it onto the droplet here, and that would make it play during the animation. Of course, it would play on the output device that you choose. So normally, if sound is set to output speakers, which normally it would be, you'd hear it on your speakers. So now if I play a slideshow, let me do that. I'll start it. You can hear the sound now playing uh, because it's recording over the microphone. So that's how you can manipulate all the settings. Now, it could be that you want to record. Let me first pause it. It could be that you want to record a slideshow, and you might even want to record it with music. I'll show you both. We'll start with how to record the slideshow itself. The easiest way to do that is by using something that you already have on your Mac, which is called QuickTime. QuickTime is a um, tool that's every, available on every Mac and let's launch it. QuickTime player. It will start with a uh, open window but what we can do is use a file menu and then choose new screen recording. And that brings up this little black menu and that allows us to do a screen recording. So we can um, hit the red button for record and once we do it starts recording. As we do want to determine where we want the, the slideshow movie to start we want to have the ability to crop the movie later on and we do. Um, I will show you that after we do a recording. So let's just uh, assume that we want to do a recording now um, and just click on record to start the recording. You can do the full screen, which we'll, we'll first do, and um, that will just record the entire screen, obviously, and it will start once, once we click. So when I click here, it's now recording. You won't see anything, but you will see that this little icon is now there at the top, indicating that it is recording. So now we can actually start the slideshow again, just start it. And because it has a few seconds delay building up the slideshow and getting to the black screen and then fading in the first image, um, you can crop that off the video afterwards. So music is starting and the slideshow is starting. And there's the first picture. So we'll let it go through the first three pictures just to get something worth saving as a movie. So those are the first three, and I'll just use escape again to pause it, or to make it not full screen. And once we've done that, we can actually stop the recording. And we can stop also the slideshow. So now we have a window that QuickTime opened, which is the recording of the screen, the entire screen as a movie. And this has the entire animation in it as well. We can slide through it, scroll through it, and here you see we have the images that we wanted. So we can make it uh, cropped, uh, we can crop it to the right length, so we can choose the crop start by using the edit trim function. And Trim gives us an overview of all the images in the animation. We can go to the first shot and make it start just before it starts to fade in. And at the end we can do the same thing so we can basically have it end where we want. And if we're happy with that we say Trim. And then we have a file that can, we can save. So we can now say File Save. And we can call this a test movie and save it on the desktop and say save. So now we have actually a file here 
which we can just double click which would also open QuickTime Movie and then play it. And that will show the same slideshow but then as a movie and you can export that movie or upload it somewhere um, whatever you want to do with it. The only thing that's missing here is sound. As you may notice the sound is not playing and it was playing when we recorded it. That's a limitation of QuickTime but we can solve that with a free utility that can be installed. Now I've installed it on my Mac and let me show you what it's called. It's called Loopback. Just Google Loopback, it's from Rogue Amoebi uh, and it's uh, freeware so you don't have to pay for it. It runs on every Mac and it can be used to reroute the audio because QuickTime only records uh, the microphone by default and not the uh, and screen recording doesn't record any sound so what we can do is set up the sound so it will record the sound from the music playing from slideshow pro so to do that we go to system preferences we go to sound and because we have loopback installed we have as an output option loopback audio and also as an input option we have loopback audio so both can use loopback audio and if you do then using the screen recording for QuickTime can actually record audio as well. Let's demonstrate that. So let's close this one. And suppose we want to do a um, slideshow that is not the full screen but smaller. We could set this one to be not full screen. Use the zoom effect, use a different effect, so maybe the random ripple one. And um, we could say we want to recording first so we'll first go to QuickTime again so we'll just launch QuickTime and do a new recording new screen recording and before we start it now we want to select the window that we will be um, recording from so to do that we can just say start which will open up the window and then we can say record here and then select only this part of the screen. So now this creates a, a recording of only this section. And it starts recording when I hit the uh, start button. Uh, you don't hear the sound playing now because it's rerouted, but it will be recorded. So if we now use the start recording, we should be getting uh, the animation with sound playing in the backdrop in the recording of QuickTime. So we'll let it run for a few slides. And when we're done with the slideshow, we can simply pause it or stop it. So we'll stop this one. Okay. And we can also stop the slideshow pro. And now of course we won't hear any sound of the recording because we still rerouted our sound to the loopback output mode so to get it back we go back to sound preferences and we switch it the output back to internal speakers and now we will be hearing sound when we play this so when we play this video it has sound with it So now you can do exactly the same thing like we did before. We can turn it to the point where we need it and then record that as a video with sound. So let's do that. We'll say edit trim. Go to the first frame we want. So we'll use it from about here and let it end here and just say trim and save that. So there will be a test movie sound, save it, and now we do have a movie with sound included. So if we, double, if we just double click this, we can play it, and it has sound and animation. So that's how you can export the movie with sound from Slideshow Pro. If you have any problems with Slideshow Pro, with using it, with um, features that are missing, something that doesn't work on your Mac, feel free to contact us. We're willing to help you get it fixed. 
Um, and I hope you find this movie useful in how to make a recording and how to add sound to that recording and get it as a movie that you can upload somewhere. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.